Hello fellow airmen and welcome to War Thunder with Windwalker 85. Today I'll be presenting you the Boston Mark 1 bomber aircraft. It's a premium aircraft and I won it in one of the previous events. I must say I'm really fortunate to have it. This is one of my favorite bombers in low ranks and when it comes to Brits, currently this is the only useful bomber with significant payload in uh, British low ranks. I wouldn't count on Wellingtons because in War Thunder they are flying coffins. You might as well paint a bullseye on your plane and let enemy fighters feast on you. Anyway, in British Commonwealth Air Forces, bomber variants of the DB-7 were usually known by the service name Boston, while night fighter and intruder variants were usually known as Havoc. An exception to this was the Royal Australian Air Force, which referred to all variants of the DB-7 by the name Boston. The United States Air Force referred to night fighters as P-70s. In March of 1937, a design team headed by Donald Douglas, Jack Northrop, and Ed Heinemann produced a proposal for a light bomber powered by a pair of 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney Wasp Jr. radial engines mounted on a high-mounted wing. It was estimated that it could carry a 1,000-pound bomb load at 250 miles per hour. Reports of aircraft performance from the Spanish Civil War indicated that this design would be seriously over, uh, underpowered, and it was subsequently cancelled. However, in the autumn of the same year, the United States Army Air Corps issued its own specification for an attack aircraft. The Douglas team took the Model 7A design, upgraded it with 1100 uh, horsepower Pratt & Whitney twin WASP engines and submitted the design as the Model 7B. It was maneuverable and fast, but did not attract any U.S. orders. The model did, however, attract the attention of a French purchasing commission visiting the United States. The Neutrality Act of 1935 at the time forbade the sale of arms, including aircraft, to any nation at war, and President Roosevelt had just issued a call both for its revision and a rearmament program for the Air Corps. Aided by the Treasury Department's Procurement Division, headed by retired naval officers, and Secretary of the Treasury, Henry Morgenthau Jr., the French discreetly participated in the flight trials, so as not to attract criticism from Americans. Uh, the Air Corps, which controlled the aircraft's development, uh, but had been excluded from negotiations between the French, the Production Division, and Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics, was directed by the White House in 1939 to release the DB-7 from assessment in uh, contradiction of its own regulations. The secret was revealed when the Model 7B crashed on January of the same year, while demonstrating single-engine performance. Um, even uh, so, the French were still impressed enough to order 100 production aircraft, with the order increased to 270 when the war began. 16 of those had been ordered by Belgium for its own aviation. Although uh, Boston is not the fastest or longest range aircraft in its class, the Douglas DB-7 series distinguished itself as a tough, dependable combat aircraft with an excellent reputation because of its speed and maneuverability. Test pilots summed it up as uh, very easy to take off and land. Uh, the plane uh, represents a def definite advantage in the design of flying controls, extremely pleasant to fly and maneuver. Ex-pilots often consider it uh, as their favorite aircraft of the war due to the ability to toss it around like a fighter. Its true impact was that the Douglas bomber was extremely adaptable and found a role in every combat theater of the war and excelled as a true pilot's airplane. In the course of war, 24 squadrons operated the Boston. It first entered the service with uh, Royal Air Force Bomber Command in 1941. Their first operational use was not until February 1942 against enemy ships. On 4th of July uh, 1942, United States Army Air Force Bomber crews flying the RAF Boston aircraft took part in operations in Europe for the first time, attacking enemy airfields in the Netherlands. Uh, they replaced the Bristol Blenheims, uh, for daylight operations against occupied uh, Europe until replaced in turn by uh, the Havilland Mosquitoes. 
Some Havocs were converted to turbine light aircraft, which replaced the nose position with a powerful searchlight. Uh, the turbine light aircraft would be brought onto an enemy fighter by ground radar control. Uh, the onboard radar operator would then direct the pilot until he could illuminate the enemy. At that point, a Hawker Hurricane fighter accompanying the turbine light aircraft would make the attack. Uh, uh, turbine light squadrons were disbanded in early 1943. Uh, at the time, at the beginning, tactic uh, was useful, but eventually it was scratched. Um, as you have already noticed in War Thunder, Boston is a neat little plane. It has powerful engines, and even though it's spawned at fighter's altitude, it can climb pretty good without losing too much speed. It can carry up to four 500-pound bombs, which is enough for any target on the ground or sea. It turns pretty good, so without difficulties you can dodge incoming enemy fire, or if necessary, you can even dogfight in it. The only disadvantage, by my opinion, are the guns, because they are kind of weak. Uh, you got four 7.7mm Browning machine guns, and you got two turrets with 7.7mm Vickers K machine guns. However, if you are accurate enough, and you have good firing position, you'll do just fine. Overall, very good bomber plane for low ranks, and I warmly recommend it. Well, um, that should be all for now. I hope you enjoyed this overview. As always, check your six. I might be on your ass. See you in the air.